Hi everybody, welcome inside the CrossFit Update Studios. I'm Sean Woodland with Roy McKernan and Tommy Marquez and the team events have been released. Before we jump into all six of those, the team competition this year to me is particularly intriguing because it's the first time we've seen the four person format. We have 34 countries that are sending at least one team to regionals. There are a lot of more things to be excited about here. That's why I'm fired up about this, but why should people be fired up about the team competition in 2018? I love that global element that you pointed out. That's amazing to have that many countries represented. I also think that now more than ever, the CrossFit Games team competition is about exposing the weakest link. We've already taken two people out of the equation, so now we're going to have a much more exciting competition, and Dave Castro has this wide open canvas to create more exciting events. And on top of that, there's some certain nuances that come with each event or within the framework of the competition that we may not even mm -hmm. be aware of, and I think uh, as we get work towards regionals, it's going to be exciting to see how those nuances kind of unearth themselves. We have six total team events that will play out over three days. Let's give you the overview here. We will start on Friday. We have overhead squats and double unders, and then a handstand walk where the obstacles come into play. Event two, we are breaking out the worm. We move to day number two, two more events, events three and four. Event three will have some assault bike and some partner deadlifts, and then in event four, a repeat from last year with worm thrusters and burpees. And then finally on Sunday, two final events, Rope climbs, rowing, and snatches for event five, then event six, the worm comes back out and we mix that in with some handstand push-ups. And let's go back to the format change. I think these events look a lot different if we have six people on the teams. Absolutely, and I just mentioned all these nuances that we might get to see show up as a result uh, of this new programming being opened up by only having four athletes. And we see these right away just scattered across most of these events. We've got the handstand walking course. We've got, uh, with event four, you have a faster time cap, even though it's kind of a repeat. You have a new burpee standard with the synchronization. You have some freedom within the, uh, the event to kind of shift around your order. All of this already, and we haven't even seen anything play out yet. Yeah, let's get into event number one on Friday morning. It will be a male-female, male-female relay. It begins with 25 overhead squats and then 150 double-unders. Then as a relay, it is a handstand walk and the obstacles will come into play for the teams like they will for the individuals. The time cap is 17 minutes. When you look at this event right off the bat, this thing has the potential to really thin the herd and separate the contenders from the pretenders. Yeah, it's a clear message from Castro that this is the CrossFit Games regionals, and we are going to select the best teams to go on to the CrossFit Games. It's not uncommon to see a high skill event at the very beginning of, of the weekend. We've seen it in 2014. There was a handful of muscle ups for every single athlete. We've seen strict handstand push ups in 16 and 17. So, Sean, like you said, this is going to thin the herd. Mm -hmm. Very early on, you'll have a clear picture of which teams came to play. How should teams attack event number one? Well, really treat it as two parts, right? The first portion is really just a trap to kind of blow up your shoulders and hopefully tax you for the handstand walk portion. And beyond that, as you get to that second portion of the event, send your strong handstand walkers out first, get them through the course, give yourself some time for the other people that may struggle. So hopefully you don't hit the time cap for this event. That's event number one, the second and final event for day number one for the teams, four rounds, a 200 meter run as a pair. That's done on an air runner, then 25 synchronized chest to bar pull-ups in pairs. And then finally the team comes back together and performs 10 worm clean and push press. And when you just look at this thing at first glance, you think, okay, that doesn't look too bad. But then you start doing the math 100 chest bar pull-ups, synchronized nonetheless. I mean, this thing could get brutal pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, 100 per pair, really, and there's a ton of moving parts. You have the chest bar pull-ups, you have the worm, you have the freedom to mix up your pairs as you progress through each round of this. I mean, it, I, I love the theme, too. You have almost an isolated movement in each of these events. In the first one, it's the handstand walk. This one, it's the worm. What do you think the keys to event two are? Well, when you look at couples events, you often talk about pair selection. And I think on this one, it's a little bit different. I think you have to have leaders or, or colonels on the field because there is the ability to switch around. People can move back and forth and the pairs don't have to stay fixed. On the synchronized movements, especially something where you're pulling yourself over a bar or to the bar, I think that there's the stronger athlete can really make up ground for someone who's a little bit more weak. Now you talked about nuances. I thought the interesting thing based on our conversation earlier, you think about that run, there's no direct correlate, but in team event three in 2015, 
15, we did do the half a mile with 50 wall balls. That's the same accumulation of distance that you would have. I think that thing is gonna go a little bit slower than the pull-ups would, so I think people can be more conservative on those chest of bar pull-ups and not try and go for broke, but on that runner, you're gonna have to run, run, run really mm -hmm. fast. Now let's move into day number two. Two more events on Saturday, it begins with event number three, male-female pairs. They will both do the same movements, however, the rep scheme will change for the second pair. First pair will go out and they will do three rounds of 30 calories or 20 calories for the women on the assault bike and then 2159 of deadlifts, partner deadlifts, at 440 pounds. The second pair will do the same movements, but they will do them straight through. So 90 calories for the male athlete, 60 calories for the female athlete on the assault bike, and then 45 partner deadlifts at 440 pounds. And the time cap is 17 minutes. It's pretty straightforward <laughs> and whenever you see an event like this if you think that it's simple there's usually a trap buried it's in there. pretty straightforward on a bike for 90 Oof. calories that's absolutely heinous we've seen the partner deadlift rear its ugly head in past regional end games events and uh, they were always paired with something else until last year that's the first time that we saw the partner deadlift with the assault bike and people were absolutely devastated so on this one with that many calories and this many deadlifts you're gonna really have to want it and for the coach or team captain you really have to know your team here in order to set yourself up for success yeah Rory mentioned that pair selection is always mm -hmm. key but I think this one in particular for a couple of reasons first off that second pair tackling this event better be your Clydesdales. They better be the <laughs> mutters that can just bear down on that assault bike. And then be ready to kind of reload and tackle some heavy partner deadlifts because you look at the format with 45 straight and moving every nine, there's not much of a break or escape from there. So there's some people that can just black out and pull that bar time after time after time. And then I think the cumulative effect of this event on that pair is gonna be much worse than the first pair. Mm -hmm. So those people better be ready to be a little bit more tired, a little more beat up as the weekend wears on. Speaking of getting beat up, we move on to event number four, and this is actually a repeat from last year. As a team, four time, 40 worm thrusters, 40 burpees, then 30 worm thrusters and 30 burpees. The time cap decreases. It is now 12 minutes and the burpees are a little bit different, but this is now the first time that we have seen a team repeat event at regionals. Yeah, at least as the event reads, we have an exact repeat from last year and consecutive years. That's unheard of. It's the first time we've done that, but I think there's plenty different to chew on in this particular event. You look at the time cap has dropped by three minutes. The burpee standard's a little bit different and less teammates, so fewer moving parts overall to really account for. And now I'm just excited to see if maybe some teams can best the event record times that we saw from the Wasatch Brutes last year in this event, you know, and really kind of boost up the competition level. Whenever you are working as a team, especially with that worm, communication is huge. Communication is huge, especially in that kind of an environment and especially when mistakes begin to happen. For an event like this, my recommendation for teams is to actually practice their plan B, C, and D. We've seen it time and again on the floor where one little thing goes wrong, but you're on the wrong side of the worm for the burpee. And the miscommunication between the team at that point causes everything to absolutely fall apart. Study this event. It's been done in the past, so there's really no excuse to not know what's happening. I think that new burpee standard is going to be more difficult yeah. because in this event now you have to be coordinated on the ground, but you can't see each other. You don't have mm -hmm. that eye contact. So that's going to be uh, one of those nuances that we keep talking about that we're going to see people have to overcome. Right. Two days down, one final day to go in the team competition, and we begin with event five on Sunday. 20 rope climbs in pairs. The females go first, then the males. 40 calories each on the rower and then 60 snatches total uh, as a pair. The weight for the men is 135, for the women it is 95. The time cap is 17 minutes. This is another one that you know, pretty straightforward and looks like it is going to be our first real sprint of the competition. Yeah, I think, I think it is really straightforward. And it's the first time that we're intentionally separating the men and the women. And I like this format because you can get by with a little bit of help from your friends. You can split up the work on the ropes and the snatches however you want. So that's always fun to see um, how athletes both hold one another up and, and work off of one another in that kind of a situation. What do you think the keys are here to success in event five? I really think the rope sets the tone for this event. You take a look at the other two movements, the rowing and the snatches, I think even exhausted, there's not gonna be much variation in terms of speeding up or slowing down unless you burn yourself out on those rope climbs. And I think this is a situation where if you're efficient doing a combination of legless or maybe a pinch here and there, you can actually make up a significant amount of time on the rope and then maybe have a little bit left in the tank to kind of burn it in and take a chance on that row or the final snatches to close out this event. Final event to close out the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Team Regional Competition. 
four time, 144 handstand push ups and then a 144 foot worm lunge. The time cap is nine minutes, looks pretty simple, but there is a rotation order on the handstand push ups that the teams need to adhere to as they go throughout the event. And this is one where I think we are going to see so many different plans of attack, at least in week one, before we figure out how this thing really needs to be done. And, and I love this. I love this event format. I love that we're giving them enough rope to potentially you know, hang themselves <laughs> with or find out something that works really well, can play to the strengths of the people who can crush handstand push-ups. And who doesn't love finishing the weekend with a march to the finish line mm -hmm. like we could see with this lunge and, and maybe see some hopes or dreams lost in that final movement? I mentioned the rotation. You're going to expand on that a little bit, but teams really need to have that plan dialed in if they're going to do well here. I think that they should toy with <clears throat> not just one, excuse me, but many in advance of the regionals with this event in particular. Like you said, it is the fixed rotation. And I've pictured in my head anything from like having domestiques like in the Tour de France <laughs> where somebody's just a designated handstand holder. They do one push up and get out of the way um, to making sure the rotation. One thing, no matter what the scenario is, remains the same. You see it, and I call it a rookie mistake because it absolutely is. The one person who goes a little bit too far, mm -hmm. maybe to failure because they get excited, they're in a team environment, and they do that one rep too many. They got to get out of the way, be good at communicating, and make sure that you know your transitions are tight, you know uh, how to communicate with right. one another when you're going to stop and move on. Yeah, you came up with a plan for a reason. Stick to it. Yeah, don't be that guy that goes out in a blaze of glory. When you look at the new format here now and, and, and the events that we have, I mean, I think that the team competition in 2018 has the potential to be the most exciting th through all nine regionals that we have ever seen. Yeah, I take a look at the history of the team competition and uh, a few times where which we kind of upped the level of competition for everybody. The last time I really felt like we did that was in the 2011, 2012 years where we required every single athlete at the games to start participating in every event. So you mm -hmm. couldn't really specialize anymore. And I think this is another step in that direction with losing two athletes. Yeah, yeah and you talk about the quality of the athletes. I, I think that the new format roped a couple of old individual games athletes in. And we used to make the assumption that the team, the team scenario was for individuals who are retiring. You gotta remember there's also the opposite. We got Pat Vellner from Team Competition. There's fantastic sure. athletes who now with these events in this scenario and four athletes on a team are gonna be able to shine. And so I also think at the CrossFit Games, whereas sometimes we've had a little bit of an anticlimactic finish, mm -hmm. we're gonna have something very close and a more tight race by the time we get to the end of the weekend for all, uh, all the top three spots. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the team competition throughout regionals and beyond here in 2018. That is going to do it for us for today. Remember, you can get all the detailed information on every team event for the regionals at games.crossfit.com. Regionals begin on May 18th. You can see every heat of every event live on the game site, games.crossfit.com, on Facebook Watch, and also on cbssports.com. Good luck to all the teams participating in the 2018 Reebok CrossFit Games Regionals. Look forward to watching you throw down. For Tommy and Roe, I'm Sean, and we'll see you next time.